I'll be showing an end-to-end -end demo of Reading Progress and Reading Coach in Microsoft Teams. Reading Progress is our free fluency tool where educators can make assignments to students to practice reading out loud, the students get personalized coaching tips from the Reading Coach, and then educators can review the assignments and get class insights and more recently, broad district insights. So let's get started. I'm here in Microsoft Teams as an educator and I'm going to go to Assignments. At the bottom, we'll click Create and then Assignment. I'll give it a quick title and instructions. Now the key part is we'll click Attach and then there's a special Reading Progress assignment type. Click this. Now I'm in the area where I can choose my Reading Fluency passage. We have a couple options. One is the Sample Library and I'll click this. We've partnered with ReadWorks, a leading nonprofit, and we have lots of different reading passages. So I can sort by grade and choose a different passage. So here's an example. I can preview this. Here is this reading passage. I'll hit back. Just to note, this is only English for the sample passages. I'll click Cancel. We also have the ability to import a Word document or PDF from many different areas. So if I have a OneDrive where I'm storing my passages, I could go from there. Let's say that your district has a set of passages that you want to be able to pull from all the elementary school teachers or all of the middle school teachers. You could put that into a specific team and then choose a document or a PDF from there. I'll click cancel. I can also upload from my own device. So for our example, I'm going to upload a passage from my own device. I'll click here and upload a passage. I've selected a Word document, but I can also choose a PDF. Now I can set all the details on my reading passage. Another note, Reading Progress supports reading out loud in 116 languages and locales. For example, maybe I've uploaded a passage that's a PDF and I want to make sure that the language is set properly. Right here it shows the language. If I click Edit, I can drop this down and make sure that I've set the reading passage to the right language or locale. We'll leave this as it is and I'll just click Cancel. You could also edit the passage as well. So if you want to make a tweak or if it didn't convert quite right, I could go into Edit just typing some garbage and hit the checkbox to save it. Now on the right hand side, I'll go set some examples. You can set reading level. Not everyone uses reading level. Maybe you use Lexile level. Maybe you use 1 through 10 or A through Z. This is a customizable field. I'll leave that empty. You can set the genre. Maybe you say, hey, this is a nonfiction passage. You could set the number of attempts. So in this case, I could drop this down and I might say, hey, you only get four attempts or five attempts. So this is customizable. Another area is time limit. A popular request was, hey, I'd like to do a one minute cold read. You can set for a one minute limit and you can even have a time cutoff feature. So when that minute is done, the way we calculate it is specifically just the words read for that minute. You can set for three minutes or five minutes or whichever limit you'd want. Maybe I'll leave it at three minutes in this case. An important concept is pronunciation sensitivity. This is the auto detect software. I like to call this the picky dial. How picky would you like the software to be when it's listening to your student read? We have a default setting, but for example, if you have younger students, you might want to make it less sensitive. Turn the picky dial so it's less picky. Maybe you have first grade readers or early readers. You could also make it more sensitive or more picky. Maybe you're a world language teacher. Myself, I had a French teacher in high school and he would probably set the picky dial to more sensitive because he was very picky about a pronunciation. And just to note, this is great software for people who have world language practice. This is a fun one to try there. We'll just leave it for default. Next up is Reading Coach, and I'm going to show more details on that. By default, the Reading Coach is on. The Reading Coach is going to pop up after your student reads out loud, and it will highlight the most mispronounced words, the top five. Then those students can practice in a personalized way with the reading coach. And you can customize that reading coach as an educator. If I click edit, here are some of the customizations for that reading coach. There are some support, so things like stretching the word or listening to it out loud. Atmosphere. Or even showing a picture. Now you can customize what supports you want for your students. Maybe you want to turn off show a picture and maybe you want to turn off play the word. You only want to allow that stretching the word to break it into syllables. You can also show down here when those tools show up. You could say, I would like the student to try at least once before that support comes out, or you could say they're always available. You can choose a different voice, so you can have lots of different read aloud voices for your coach, and you can even choose the prompting style, more direct versus more supportive. I'll leave everything as a default, so I'm just gonna cancel right here. And the last thing we'll talk about is requiring video. 
Reading Progress records the students' audio and video if you'd like. Many educators have said it's more engaging to be able to watch that student read through a video and to see them. Also, students oftentimes have said, I've never seen myself read. So having a video for them to watch later is really powerful. So you can turn that to on or off. I'll leave it as yes for require video. And now while it's not quite rolled out yet for this video, by summer of 2023, educators can add comprehension questions to their reading progress passages, just like you see here. If the educator flips on the switch, the comprehension questions will pop up and they can fill these out. There's also a checkbox that can allow the student to preview questions before reading. Just to give a quick example, when the student reads the passage, they will open up that reading progress passage. And in this case, the educator checked the box. So they'll actually be able to look at the comprehension questions before they start reading. And when they're done, the actual comprehension questions pop up, teacher can review it and get insights. The last thing we'll show as an educator is the student view. If you're using this for the first time, you might say, I want to see what the student is going to see on their side when they record. So I'll click student view. And the first time you do this, you'll have to click allow for your camera and audio. Hey, there I am on the video. This is what the student would see. It says three minutes to read. They click start. They will get a countdown. And then they will get to go and read out loud. But a quick example of what it's going to look like when these students read. So I will click exit student view. That gives you a quick tour of how the educator can set up the reading progress passage. In the upper right, I'll click next. Now I'm back where I'm gonna make the assignment as a teacher. I could add a rubric, I could set points, I could do lots of other things I would normally do for this assignment, even making it individualized for people or not. Now I'm gonna go and click assign at the top and we'll switch over to the student and we'll show what it looks like on the student side. I'm signed in as a student and here's my reading passage. I'm going to open this up and here is this reading passage geography. I'll click this. The first time the student uses this, they'll click allow. Now we have Ashley here and she's going to start reading this passage. One other thing, we have immersive reader technology so Ashley can change the way the page looks so it's more comfortable for her to read. I'll briefly show what that looks like and then Ashley will start reading. Let's go. The study of Earth's landforms is called bicycle geography. Landforms can be mountains and valleys. They can also be glaciers or rivers. People need water to drink. They also need it for washing. Through history, people have settled near fresh water. Now Ashley is done and she can click the little play button to watch herself read. The study of Earth's landforms is called bicycle geography. She can also click the start over button if she wants to give it another try. But in this case, she's all done. She's going to click I'm finished and it'll upload the video. These words were the most challenging for you. Select any word to tackle them again. Here's the reading coach and this listens to the student and pops up the most mispronounced words. So I'll be Ashley in this case. Here are the words that she had the most challenges with, and I can click on any word and drill into it. So in this case, I'm going to click on the first word, landforms. When you're ready, press the microphone and read the word out loud. Now, if you remember earlier, the educator customized the reading coach. You can do things like make them practice one time before these different supports right here show up, or you can turn certain supports on or off. So I can stretch the word into syllables. I can listen. Landforms. I can click this to see a picture. So I have lots of different options depending on what the educator will allow. So now I'm just going to go down here and click the microphone and try it. Laned forms. Keep trying. You're almost there. Okay, it looks like I didn't get that one. Maybe I'm going to listen. Landforms. Okay, I'll try it again. Landforms. You're making your brain stronger. Nice work. Okay, in this case, I got it. And then in the lower right, I can go to the next word and again, try out all the same things that I did before and click through these different words. If I go back to home, you can see the first one, I have a green star on. And so a lot of students want to get all the green stars. They might not always be able to get them, but they can practice. So I'll just speed ahead and we'll see what this looks like. Now I've practiced all my words. You can see that I got four out of the five to the green star. I didn't quite get resources, but now when I'm ready to finish, I'm just gonna click I'm done. 
And now I'm ready to turn in my assignment. In the upper right, I'll just click Turn In. Okay, a unicorn rainbow. Now we're gonna switch over to the educator and show what the teacher review experience looks like. Now I'm signed in as the educator and I'm gonna to go to my assignments list and here's the geography passage. And it looked like Ashley turned hers in. We'll click this to open. Here's the educator review for reading progress. In the upper left, you have the video that the student recorded of themselves reading. You have the correct words per minute card right here. And if you hover on the little I, you get more information. You have the accuracy rate card. And this includes mispronunciation, omissions, insertions, repetitions, and self-corrections that were flagged, and I'll show that in just a moment. And then on the right-hand card here, you see the number of practiced words. This came directly from Reading Coach, and I'll show more details on that a little later. What you have here is all the words that were marked up automatically by the auto-detect software. So what I'll do first is go here on the video and hit play. The study of Earth's land forms is called physical geography. Now you'll see that she mispronounced physical, and the auto detect automatically flagged that. Now what's nice is maybe I want to go down here and I see the word region. I'm going to click on that word, and you have a choice here that is jump to word. Let's choose this and see what happens. Region reg are often. So she mispronounced region, and I can jump to any word by just clicking on it, just like I can here, say jump to word. Now let's see what happened here. It looks like she omitted a few words. I'm going to click on borders and choose jump to word. Borders, freshwater source. Sources also in so she omitted those words there, and then she did a self-correction on sources. This gives you a really nice sense of how the auto-detect software can work. I can also click on any word and mark it manually. So maybe she mispronounced geography when I was watching through the video. I can click on mispronunciation. And if you note right here, the accuracy rate updates automatically. I can also click on any word and mark it as correct, like this. This gives you the ability to use auto detect, but in a hybrid mode, so you can manually mark and change things if you need to. Also, I can turn off auto detect completely. I'll flip this switch off. If I do that, then as an educator, I can just play video and click and mark those words just as I want. So it's really easy to do automatic or manual. Turn auto detect back on, everything comes back. So educators have that option. I can also change the pronunciation sensitivity after the fact. So that's the picky dial. Maybe I want to make the picky dial less because maybe this student has been struggling. Maybe I want to make the picky dial higher. I can choose it after the fact. Now on the right hand side right here you see five practiced words. If I click this card, it pops up a dialogue and now the educator can see the exact attempts and tools used for the different words that the student was practicing. So I can see in this case, they listened to the word, they stretched the word, and they looked at the picture but we have other examples where this changes over time. And so this is really helpful for a teacher to see. I'm gonna close practiced words. We also have some time-saving tools for educators. If I click here, you'll see text tools. If I go down and hover, I can insert words to the left, insert words to the right if I want. I can even select multiple words and multiply bulk choose words. So a lot of time savers there. We also have the ability to return a report to the student. So when you return this reading passage after you're done, the student will get a copy as well and they can see how they did. I'll show that in a moment. If I click edit, the full report's the default one that you see right now. And that has numbers, it has all the color markups. If I choose simplified report, that will get rid of all the numbers and percentages. Maybe you have younger readers and that's gonna be overload for them. You can even customize the report. So if I go in here, I can customize exactly what I want the students to see. Maybe I just want them to focus on mispronunciations and nothing else. You can add the reading coach results or not, and even things like number of attempts and reading level. I'm going to go back here, and we will leave it on full report for now, and I'll click save. In the lower left, you even have the ability to see progress of Ashley Kozak over time. If I click this, that'll pull up a nice little report that's specifically based on her results. You can scroll down and see the details here. I'm going to do a deeper dive for insights in just a little bit, but just to note that it is right here and really useful if you want to drill into her progress. And if I give feedback just like I would normally, great job, all those things, I can return this back to her. So in this case, what I'm going to do is return that assignment. And using the speed grader up top, I can drill into the next student just like I would any other assignment. Next up, we're going to flip over to the student who received that reading progress passage. She'll be able to see how she did and use some tools to practice there as well. 
I'm signing in as a student and my teacher has returned the geography passage. We're going to open this up. As a student, this is my view. I can see the video. I can see correct words per minute, accuracy rate, and all the information that we've showed earlier. Also in the lower left, it shows me the words that I practiced. Now in here, if I want to click on a word, let's say I click on region and I say, Hey, I, I thought I said that word, right? I can choose jump to word and I can hear how I pronounced it. I can click on a word and say, listen to this word region. Then we have text to speech kick in. I can even click here and choose practice word and it'll launch the reading coach. So let's choose this. So here's region. I can practice reading this word out loud. I can go back. So lots of opportunities for students to practice over and over again the words that they want. They can see their video. They can see how they're doing. The final component of reading progress is insights. So first, let's switch over to Kara the Educator. I'm Kara the Educator back here in my team and in the upper left, I'll click on Insights. This is the class insights page that all educators have in their class teams. Everything from digital activity, assignments, reading progress, reflect and communication, and even spotlights below. I'm not gonna do a deep dive into all the insights, but in this case, I will click on reading progress. In the upper right, I'll expand. I've got average words per minute in my class, average accuracy rate, even assignments per student. I have a challenging word cloud. I can highlight on a word and see the number of times it was mispronounced. So a really quick glance on across my class, what are the words people are having challenges with? If I want to create a challenge assignment, I click this, it pulls up the most mispronounced words and I can easily click on different words, even recommendations for practice data that's similar to the words that were mispronounced. And if I click create challenge assignment, it automatically pops these words into a new assignment for me to use if I want. And here's what that looks like. It took all the words and popped them right into an assignment. Let's go back to insights. If I scroll down, you'll see each assignment and it's broken up by average accuracy rate. And right here is the legend. I can hover over any of these and get a sense of the mispronunciations, omissions, insertions, etc. Scrolling down, you see average words per minute. So I can see how my class is doing over time with reading speed. And then average accuracy rate. Again, I can see over time how these are trending. If English is the language that you're using, you will also see phonics rules. So all of words are broken into phonemes, which map to phonics rules. We've automatically highlighted these right here. So everything from consonants and vowels, even categories of different types of phonics rules. So fairly advanced information. So if you want to see the phonics rules in this case of different consonants, and I go down to the letter C in the lower left, if I check this box, this is the soft C like in the word sent. In the upper right, if I click create challenge assignment, just like you saw earlier with the word cloud, we will have things like chance, city, dance, practice, and you can create a challenge assignment based on a specific phonics rule. This is really powerful stuff. And we'll close this and keep going down. At the bottom, you have student list, so you can see all your different students and the accuracy of the students in your class. You hover and you get more information. In the upper left at the top, I can search by a specific student. So if I scroll down and I choose Alex Wilbur, the entire set of dashboards recalibrates for Alex. So here's Alex's average words per minute, his accuracy rate, a word cloud just for Alex, and then the different assignments that Alex was doing. When I scroll down here, we add Alex compared to the rest of the class. So now I can easily compare him to the rest of the class and how he's doing. I can even focus in on the specific phonics rules that Alex was having challenges with. So this is really powerful information that is automatically pulled in right into Insights. The final thing we'll show with Insights is a new announcement that Insights for a school or district or even country, that is going to be available for free probably in April 2023. All districts and schools around the world will get free high-level Insights. To add that, hit the three-dot menu and search for Insights here. I've already got it, so click Insights in your app bar on the left-hand side. I'm gonna right click and pin this. Now this is just demo data, so yours won't look exactly like this until everything's set up. But if I wanna drill in on reading progress over here on the right, just click reading progress. And this is a high level set of information. In the top here, I can drill down. So we've got the Ministry of Education. Let's say this is a whole country. And then I'm gonna look at all the high schools or primary schools that are set up. I can click and drill down. So maybe I wanna to go to primary schools, now you're seeing Little Valley Elementary, Mountain Oak, and Riverside. I can drill down further. We'll go into Little Valley Elementary. 
Now we can see the different grades. If I scroll down, I can see the average number of reading progress assignments per student who's using reading progress. Again, this is all across a country, a district, elementary schools, all this information. I might even drill into second grade. Now it's gonna filter and I can see the same information but even seeing the accuracy rate, correct words per minute, and even the word cloud for a specific grade. So this lets you go all the way from the very tippy tippy top into your schools, drilling down. You can even filter on different dates, months. So really powerful information on reading fluency across a really broad spectrum. Again, in April, probably and into May, this is gonna be rolling out and will be free available to all schools around the world. If you wanna keep up with all the latest Microsoft updates and tips and tricks, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get all the latest videos that I post.